y'all, it's Kay with Crafting Cousins. Trish and I are so excited you decided to stop by our channel today and visit. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, we thank you so much. Today, we have a special video and we have four all new red, white, and blue crafts just for you. So grab your favorite summer beverage, like some nice cold lemonade, and let's get to crafting, y'all. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using this 14 inch wood round that I got at Hobby Lobby. It says America in raised letters. It also has three raised stars. I got mine at the end of the season last year and it was 75% off, so I paid around $1.50 for it. I'm going to be using some acrylic paint in the colors Lipstick Red, Snow White, and Two Blue. I'm going to be using some one and a half inch ribbon that I got at Michael's recently for 50% off, so it was $5. And finally, some antiquing wax, my hot glue gun, and some floral wire. So I didn't have my camera on for this first part, but I drew a line with my ruler about halfway across, a little less than half, maybe three quarters of an inch above the A here. And then I used some painter's tape to paint everything off. Then I came in with the two blue paint, and here I have one coat so far, close as I could get to the letters with my chiseled brush. Then I'm going to come in with this really fine tip brush that has a rounded edge, and I'm going to get into all those little nooks and crannies off camera. And this is what it looks like so far with just one coat of the blue paint all over this bottom half, if you will. I'm also going to come back and do two more coats of blue paint. So it did take about two and a half coats for this piece. At this point, I'm going to take a thin brush, not too wide, and I'm going to come in and paint over the letters and the stars here at the bottom. I'm only giving this one coat because I am going to be using some antiquing wax on it. It was a little time consuming, but it actually wasn't difficult. I didn't end up with any places that I had to actually redo. I reused the painter's tape that I had used on the blue, just turned it around, and I'm going to place it now on the blue so I can come in and paint the two top pieces. I have also drawn a line right down the middle to divide the top piece in half. We'll use a little more painter's tape here across the top to keep our lines nice and straight. And then I'm going to come in with the white acrylic paint and paint the first part here in the white. I only used one coat once again because I'm going to be using antiquing wax. Now that that's all dry, let's move our tape at the top over onto the white and then come in with the lipstick red and give it two good coats here. For the bow, I'm not even going to use my bow maker. I placed some tape onto my cutting mat seven inches apart, and I'm just measuring each loop each time, seven inches, pulling it in, twisting it, and adjusting it side to side. And that was all I really did. This is just a simple, easy way. My tails, well, they're just a little over seven inches tall because I went out to the edges of the tape. I cut a piece of red floral wire, oh, about eight inches long or so, it doesn't really matter, and I'm wrapping it as tight as I can around this middle. Later, I came in and I used the pieces to make it even tighter, but here, let's cut off our ribbon tail about the same length, and I dovetailed the ends by folding it in the middle and cutting out towards the wire. Later, I'm going to adjust that. I put a little glue on the back to make sure it didn't slip, Give it some fluffing because it gets squashed during the process and I also want to pull that ribbon tail down through those loops. And with that, the bow is complete. I'm using a baby wipe and some antiquing wax and I'm going right over this acrylic paint. Because I only put on one coat, it does take pretty well. In person, it looks a lot more impressive than it does on film and in the pictures. But you know how this works, if you don't like that it's too heavy handed, well, you just wipe some more off. If you need more, you put more on. And that's what it looks like so far. 
I'm going to take off the tape now and I pulled up this rope and I figured out that it was not in the center where I wanted it to be. But that's okay. I'm going to just take my wire cutters, remove it from the back, and then I'm going to have to restaple it and recenter it to use it the way I used the sign. I use some heavy duty chipboard. I'm just cutting off a few pieces, placing down the rope, and then stapling it with my heavy duty stapler. That keeps the staples from going through the front. I only had quarter inch staples and they were a little long. We'll use a little hot glue to secure our bow to the top. And I did decide to adjust those ends. They were a little long. And after that, this project is complete. Very simple, but very patriotic. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use three of these arrows like you get from the Dollar Tree. I got the short one from the Dollar Tree, but mine was out of the longer ones, so I did end up having to cut those, but typically you can get these at your Dollar Tree as well. Some assorted scrapbook paper in red, white, and blue. Some Mod Podge. Some iridescent glitter a garden stake from the Dollar Tree, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. The first thing I did was remove the hanger from the short arrow, but I am gonna hold on to that because we'll be using it again later. Then I'm going to take my scrapbook paper and I line up the red paper on the bottom and I trace around it and then cut it out. This is only going to be on the bottom of my arrow, and then for the top, I take the blue paper and I tear that using a ruler because I like that deckled edge. I think it just gives it a softer transition than if you cut it. Then we're gonna cut that out as well. Then we're gonna do the same thing for our other two arrows. I'm gonna use the star paper on the top and then I'm gonna use this red and white stripe paper on the bottom. For one, I'm gonna cut it the long way and for the other one, we'll cut it with the stripes going across. Now we're just gonna put down a really good coat of our Mod Podge. This paper is kind of thick, so I had to use a good coat. We'll put down our red paper, then we're gonna put our blue paper on top and see how that deckled edge just kind of softens it. If you had a cut edge there, it's just a little more harsh. Then we're gonna do the same thing to our other two arrows and we'll use our roller to make sure we get out as much bubbles and wrinkles as possible. Once our Mod Podge is dry, I'm gonna come back with my sanding block and I just go around the edges of my arrows, sanding down. This is gonna take off any excess paper and any splinters that you might get from the wood. Now for this one, I did decide to take a white gel pen and I did the little dot, dot, dots all around the edge and then I did some doodle circles in the middle of this just to kind of give it that whimsical look. Then we're going to take our other two arrows and we're gonna sand down around the edges of those just like we did the short one. Now to give these a little more sparkle I, and, and maybe just a little more interest, I decided to add some glitter to the edges and I'm just taking a small paintbrush. I paint around the edges with my Mod Podge. Then I pour the glitter on and shake off the excess. Now you'll notice on these two longer ones that I leave about half of one side without any glitter on it. Those are my insides and that's where the shorter firecrack is going to sit on top and I was afraid that if I put glitter all the way around it wouldn't sit right. Now for my short one I am going to go all the way around with it. Now we can lay this out. I line those up and kind of push them away from each other. Then I'm gonna put the short one on top and I'll use hot glue just on the short one and that's going to hold all three of these together. Now, if you're hanging this outside, you may want to use something like E6000 or Fix-All Adhesive. 
To add my gnome, I just put some hot glue on the tip of the hat and the feet and then hold it down till it sets, but be careful that metal gets hot with that hot glue. The last thing I need to do is add a hanger. I'm gonna take that twine we cut off and I retie a knot in the end. Then we're just going to flood each end with some hot glue and I tore off a little piece of my scrapbook paper to go over that and that's just going to help hold this in place better. Once you get your hanger on, this project is complete. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring the bell so you will be notified every time we upload new content. We upload new videos each week offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, and tips, tricks, and hacks. We just know you'll find something you like with Crafting Cousins. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these beaded wreaths that I got at the Dollar Tree for $1.25. I'm also going to be using one of these wooden planks that I got in this package from the Dollar Tree. They are about three inches by seven inches. I'm going to be using two of these wooden stars. They came in a package from the Dollar Tree. I'm also going to be using some acrylic paint in the colors red, white, and blue some words that I cut on my Cricut, but you could also use stickers or a paint pen. One says happy and one says 4th of July. I'm going to be using some ribbon and a chenille stem to make a bow. This ribbon came from Michael's. It's about one and a half inches wide and the stars are glittered. And I'm also going to be using my Easy Bow Maker and my hot glue gun. The first thing you want to do is take some kind of pliers and open up one of the loops. The wire is really thick, so it does take a little band handling, but open it up and get it flattened enough that you can take off all of the beads. Then I'm just going to divide the beads by three and place one third of them in each of my three plastic bags. I believe that came out to 17 beads for each color. And then I just take my acrylic paint and I'm going to put it down into the bags and just work it with my fingers, kneading the beads into the paint until we turned all of the beads, one third red, one third blue, and one third white. I believe the blue color was called Two Blue, T-O-O, -O, and, and the red color was called Lipstick Red. Once they are sufficiently covered, I'm going to pour them into this metal pan. I've just lined it with a little aluminum foil but I'm going to pour them into each section of the pan and I'll use a wooden skewer to separate the beads so that they don't dry next to each other and stick to each other. And it also works better if you turn the holes up and down so that they're not side to side and that helps the paint to dry better. And while that is drying and we already have our paintbrush wet, we'll go in and paint two of those small wooden stars, the edges and the front. It does take about three coats of the acrylic paint to get sufficient coverage. I'll take one of those three by seven wooden planks and I'm going to paint it in the two blue paint. This will take about a coat and a half. It really did give good coverage on this particular wood. I'm going to use my Easy Bow Maker to make a bow. Right now I'm doing about seven inch tails and three to three and a half inch loops on each side, doing two of those on each side. Then I'll do an extra loop that is smaller right in the center. And then I'll of course cut my tail here at the end to even things up. Then I'm going to come in with some floral wire and also a red zip tie. And I'm going to place it around underneath the loop and then I'll secure that down, but I'll place my wire under the loop of the zip tie before I pull it completely tight and cut off the excess. And of course, we'll do a little fluffing to our bow and also dovetail the ends by folding the end of the ribbon tail in half and cut from the fold diagonally towards the wire. And that's what our bow looks like so far. The next thing we're going to do is take those words that I had cut out, 4th of July, I'm going to center close to the bottom. We'll just place that down, smooth it down, pull off the backing. And then the same thing with this word happy, 
the Y did come off once I pulled it up, but that's okay. We'll just recenter it and place it back down and remove that film. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and glue on the stars on each end and kind of centered, but that was a mistake. What I should have done is waited until I stapled the chenille stems to the back, and then you can cover up any mistakes you made if the staples come through with the two stars. I'm going to take a chenille stem and cut it in half with my wire cutters, and then I'm going to fold each of those two pieces in half. Since I'm going to be using my heavy duty staple gun, I took two of these mini popsicle sticks that I had gotten in a package, I think at Walmart, and I'm just going to glue them to both ends of my sign on the back. That will give me a little spacing for using my heavy duty staple gun, which I'm doing now. I'm just going to staple those chenille stems right in the center, and you can also place a drop of glue on them to make sure we didn't split that chenille stem when we stapled down. The beads are now completely dry, so I'm just going to restring them back onto the wire they came on. I'm doing, of course, a red, white, and blue, red, white, and blue pattern, and I do end up leaving off two of the beads so that everything will be secure and it won't be so difficult to reattach the two pieces together at the end. I actually used my wire cutters to reattach this wire, just looping it back into the first loop and squeezing it down really tightly. Then we'll of course place our bow here at the top. I'm going to secure it with the floral wire and then also I placed a drop of glue on the back to keep it from sliding around. With a little fluffing, the bow's complete. Let's place on the sign. I had to place it towards the bottom because it's not a super long sign. It's only seven inches in length, but we're going to secure it with the chenille stems. And with that, the project is complete. We want to invite you to come with us on a crafty cruise getaway with four other YouTube channels. You can enjoy beaches and sand and all of the onboard ship amenities and spend time with six different YouTube crafters in classes curated just for you. It is going to be a blast, but space is very limited and it is going quickly. Make sure you go to the website www.craftycruisegetaway.com for all of the information. There will also be a link in the description box below. Can't wait to meet you there. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this wooden four that I picked up from Hobby Lobby when it was on sale for 40% off. I like that it's chunky and that it will stand up on its own. This word that I cut out using my Cricut, you could also just paint this on. Some white chalk paint, a napkin from the Dollar Tree, some Mod Podge, and some iridescent glitter. I wanted to give my piece a good coat of my white chalk paint. I am going to be decoupaging that napkin to the front of this, but if I didn't put down the white chalk paint, you would have been able to see the wood through the white stripes on the napkin, and I didn't like how it kind of discolored that. I'm only going to use one coat, and I do paint the front, the back, and the sides, and then I'll set it aside and let it completely dry. Now that our paint is dry, I cut two squares of this napkin, and you can tell that one is not enough to fit on this, but that's okay because we can line these stripes up at the bottom, and you won't even be able to tell once it's decoupaged on there. Now, I do remove the back, giving me just one layer, and then I'm going to put down a coat of my Mod Podge. You want to make sure that you put enough on there that this is going to stick, but the more you put the more wrinkles you're going to have. You're going to get wrinkles regardless. This is just so thin that it's almost impossible to do it without it, but the less that you use, the better that is. Now you see how I lined that up on the bottom and I just used some more Mod Podge to put it in place. 
Once that Mod Podge is dry, I come back with a fingernail file and I'm just gonna go around and sand down all around the edges. This is going to take off the excess of that napkin. Now, you could use the burn method, but I knew that it would discolor my paint and a fingernail file works perfectly for this. Now we're gonna add our word on here and I just put some transfer tape on it, picked it up, put it in place, and then I did press it down a little bit, but you can see I have to use my fingers to keep pressing it down as I pull off the tape. I was afraid if I pushed too far, it was going to pull up the napkin with it and I didn't wanna take a chance of tearing it. Now, I did decide to come back in with a white gel pen and kind of do some dashes or dots or whatever you want to call it around the letters because they were kind of blending in there with the blue and I wanted to make it pop out and this actually worked perfectly. The last thing that I decided to do was add some glitter around the edges. Now, you don't have to do this. I just wanted to give it a little something extra just to kind of make those edges pop and make it look more festive, I guess. And all I did was take a small paintbrush, I go around those edges and I paint on the Mod Podge. Then I just pour the glitter on top of it and I shake off the excess. Once you get all of your edges covered with this, this project is complete. It's so simple, but it is so pretty in my decor. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We are also over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest and would love it if you would click the link below and join us over there as well. If you enjoyed this episode, check out these videos for even more DIY inspiration. Bye, y'all.